Welcome to our lecture online. We have now been able to establish that the size of those black holes, the active black holes that produce the quasars inside those galaxies far away, they have masses from about 10 to the 5th, which is about 100,000 times the mass of the Sun, to billions of times, 10 to the 9 or billions of times the mass of the Sun. So these are super massive black holes at the center. And so the energy is then produced by the accretion disk as the material swirls around the black hole. And notice here we have, again, we have the singularity, the Schwarzschild radius, and we have the event horizon. And around that we have the swirling mass of material being pulled in. Notice this would simply be nebulas and stars that are ripped apart and they go swirling around the black hole and as they get swirling around they go faster and faster. There's a lot of friction forces in the material that heats up the material to very high temperatures, hence the visible light, UV and X-ray radiation. And then also the material gets to, becomes pulled in to the uh, towards the event horizon and as the material falls into a black hole it gets speed up to to speeds of near the speed of light and so that enormous acceleration also produces these very high energy radiation coming out of that central black hole region and then we have these very powerful magnetic fields caused by all these very fast moving material those very powerful magnetic fields accelerate particles in opposite directions perpendicular to the plane to the plane of the accretion disk and so particles will send in, in beams at speeds near the speed of light then eventually as they begin to hit other interstellar material they start slowing down and then interaction between the interstellar, interstellar material and the particles accelerated from the black hole then cause the radio radiation because of the radio lobes in both directions and I guess it should be perpendicular I didn't quite draw that correctly here but they should be perpendicular from the center region where the black hole is and where the accretion disk is out towards the edge towards the outside of the galaxy so we have enormous amount of radiation coming from the accretion disk and enormous amount of radio radiation if radio lobes are present and it turns out about 10 percent of all quasars have those radio lobes which were the initial uh, signature of the quasars when we began to discover them now what's interesting is that the quasars convert about 5 to 30 percent of the mass that gets pulled in towards the black hole to the enormous acceleration built by the accretion disk and by the radio lobes about 5 to 30 percent of the mass gets converted to energy that is huge compared to let's say the fusion reaction inside a star currently in the sun we have the proton proton chain changing hydrogen into helium and that only converts about 0.7 percent of the mass to energy so black holes are way more efficient in producing energy from the incoming material and you can see that because of that they far outshine stars by the billions and by the trillions because of this enormous amount of energy being produced by the infalling material. Again, quasars exist when we have these supermassive black holes pulling out vast quantities of material over a very short period of time, producing this enormous amount of energy, far outshining the entire galaxy hundreds to see even thousands of times. And that's the engine that stokes the quasars. The quasars are not collapsing neutron stars. Well, it's, That's <laughs> it's a result of it. So it's a very different mechanism, but it's similar in that, yes, the black hole is gathering in more material. As material falls in, it produces that enormous amount of energy. It's the acceleration of the particles into the black hole and along these radiation beams. Yeah, but if it wasn't for a neutron star collapsing, there wouldn't be quasars. Ah, so the question is, where does the black hole come from? Is it the result of a supermassive star collapsing initially and then growing in size? See that we're not sure because there's so many large galaxies that have these supermassive black holes at the center like our own Milky Way galaxy. We're not sure if those were formed at the very beginning of the formation of the universe when the galaxies first formed. Was that an initial stage of galaxy formation? And we do have some hints on that. So we believe that may be the case, that it wasn't a neutron star that set it off, but possibly. We don't know. But you'll see later on another video why we think there's some very strange things going on inside the, um, the galaxies. Other reasons why those black holes might exist. You'll see.